I want a chair to be very beautiful. I want a chair that is good to the eye, and I want a chair, above all, that is comfortable. A chair should invite you to sit. It has to give you good back support. I've had people say that my furniture is art, that it's sculpture, it's this and that, but I really don't care what they call it as long as I'm happy with what it is. This is Larry White. And uh, Larry was uh, my very first employee. But this little chair, this is beautiful fiddleback. When he oils it, it's going to be just knockout. I like to work in wood. It's a very sensuous material. I love the color of the different kinds of woods that I use. This is a chair that we made some years ago. Somebody bought it at auction and brought it back to me to be oiled. Each of the boys. Uh, well, we all have our hands and everything that goes out of here. I have found that my furniture has withstood the test of time. These are chairs. Uh, we just finished a huge dining table, and these are the dining chairs that go with it. These are chair seats that I'm going to put uh, legs on. We do everything to order. It isn't a production shop. We don't have parts all over the place that we're waiting to put together. When you're working, there's a communion between the object maker and the material he or she is working with. And then it transcends into something much greater when you make something. And someone likes it, enjoys it, and all, you're paid tenfold. That's going to be all right. There it is. Getting too old for this. I guess I should go and lie down once in a while, but I don't. <laughs> I love what I do. I'm 90 and I can still work. <laughs> It really started when I got out of the Army. I didn't want to work for anyone. I didn't want to be ever regimented again. So I went right to work at what I really liked, the graphic arts, Scripps College, graduate school. I was at the school one day in the uh, courtyard, and uh, I saw this girl clear across, and I looked at her, and I thought, that's the most beautiful girl I've ever, ever seen. She walked all across the courtyard to me and said, pardon, but could you tell me where the office is? I said, I'll not really tell you, I'll take you. And uh, I'd go back about twice a week, never saw her. And come September, I was at the same spot. She entered at the same spot and looked up, and walked over to me and said, hello, Sammy. And three months later, we were married. Frida was the heart and soul of what I do. When I married Frida, I think we didn't have any furniture at all in the house, so I made furniture for her. I made it out of Dunnage uh, that I found along the railroad track. And a magazine heard about it and sent a photographer out, and I was published in a national magazine, and people started writing to me, so on the strength of that, I quit my job and started making furniture. She became my partner in more ways than one. She was sort of my protector. If it hadn't been for her, I think I would have quit a long time ago. But she said, we can do it, we can do it. And uh, so we did it together. Well, this is the first chair I ever made. And uh, I, I liked it. I thought it was very simple and all. And uh, I'd gotten a, a little bit known. and. Uh, I uh, entered this chair in the show, the uh, Los Angeles Art Museum, and it was rejected. And uh, I got a slip. Uh, I, I can always remember Frida at the sink washing dishes, and she said, any good mail? And I said, no, look at this. And she read it, and it was a rejection slip. 
And I thought she'd throw her arms around me and tell me that they didn't know what they were doing. And she calmly put it down, turned away, kept washing dishes and said, Sam, rejection is good for the ego. And I never forgot it. I never, ever forgot that. I didn't know anything about the craft movement at all. Uh, I just started working, and uh, then one day I received a letter from the craft council and invited me to show a piece. The first conference that we had was at the Silomar. There were a lot of craftsmen like Bob Stocksdale and Art Carpenter and Martin Eschrich, Walker Weed and all. And there were about four of us on the panel. And um, they were challenging us, I know they were, and they said, making a piece of furniture takes weeks, months to make, where you design it and the factory can turn them out by the dozens. And that type of talk, or um, uh, what makes you think you can make a living at what you're doing? Well, you know, those are kind of hard questions, because you don't know if you're going to be able to make a living. All of us in the panel just sat there like dummies, and. Uh, I finally spoke up and I said, well, you know, as for me, if Charles Eames wants to design plastic bowls to sell by the thousands, I think it's his privilege. But as for me, I'd rather work the way I'm working. Uh, I can't produce very much, but I get the pleasure of making the piece. I get the pleasure of meeting the people. Uh, and I said, I'm going to continue that way. Well, after it was over, well, Wharton Eschrich, who was a real uh, you know, dogmatic kind of a guy. He said, young man, come here. And I went over to him and I thought, oh, hell, he's going to bawl me out about something. He said, I heard what you said, and don't you ever change. And I haven't. I followed what I wanted to do. I didn't let what was popular guide me. 